What's up everyone, my name is Sam. Welcome to Olight World Headquarters and welcome back to Olight 101. Last week's episode, episode one, launched the series and defined everything you need to know about flashlight performance terms. This week, we're talking about the flashlight parts, each individual piece and component, what they do, what they're called, and how they work together to illuminate your world. First up, the bezel. Now the bezel lives at the front of the flashlight. It's generally made out of steel, sometimes made out of aluminum, and it serves two core functions. The first is to protect the flashlight from accidental damage if you were to drop it face down. The steel component takes the brunt of the impact to save the aluminum from any damage. Now the bezel comes in a few different flavors. This one, like the Baton series, is always very smooth. Next up, we have the Seeker series, which has some of these small, smooth ridges, gives you a little bit more aggressive protection, but the bezel can also be used as a striking surface for self-defense, or in some cases for window breaking. This one here, the Warrior X4 bezel, made out of steel, has these more pronounced ridges. You can call these ridges crenellations, which is a term that comes from the same root as crown, comes from medieval castles where the uh, top of the walls would have these uh, up and down portions. You can shoot your arrows out from in between. These crenellations are designed to uh, provide a striking surface for self-defense, for breaking windows, that kind of thing. Moving down from the bezel, we have the lens, typically made of glass, sometimes made of polymer and it's designed to keep dust, dirt, water, and debris out of the rest of the light while allowing the beam to shine through unobstructed. Lenses are typically used in conjunction with reflectors. The silver part inside the flashlight is called the reflector. Now, this one is very smooth, and the idea with a smooth reflector is it can shape the beam to have a really crisp hotspot. So this, for long distance lights, throwers, as we defined in the previous video, it's very common for them to have deep silver polished reflectors. Reflectors come in other flavors as well. This one here on the X9R has this texture to it. So instead of being polished, you can refer to this as an orange peel because it has that sort of orange peel texture to it. And this reflects the beam or shapes the beam to have a little bit of a softer hotspot, better for floodlight. There is one other type of reflector that Olight uses extensively in the lineup, and it's called a TIR optic. Now, TIR is a physics acronym that stands for Total Internal Reflection. Now, I'm not a physicist, but in very basic terms, it takes the same idea of a conical reflector. Instead of having one deep cone, it takes a small cone and puts it inside of another small cone, taking advantage of the fact that light can bounce around in the interior surface of the first cone, bounce around inside the interior surface of the second cone, and then project forward to create a moderately intense, crisp edge hotspot. The practical upside of the TIR optic, of course, is the fact that you don't have to have the LED set so far back into a reflector in order to shape the beam, resulting in a lot more compact light while still offering a crisp and intense hotspot. Now for maximum distance, it's okay for lights to be a little bit bigger for maximum performance. So that's why they still rely on the tried and true deep silver reflector. But for EDC style of lights, something that needs a competitive beam pattern in a compact form factor, TIR is the way to go. Now Olight has been a leader in adopting and advancing TIR style of optics. They are now widespread in the flashlight industry. So if you wanna learn more, there's plenty of resources on the internet, just Google TIR. Now whether you have a TIR style of optic or a traditional reflector, the most important part of the beam remains, the LED. LED, of course, stands for light emitting diode. If you look down deep into a flashlight's reflector, you might notice that a lot of LEDs are square in profile. Now this is a very traditional type of LED, but a more contemporary solution, especially for long range lights, like the Javelot series and the Baton Turbo, a round die LED. The idea behind a round die LED is that if the beam coming off the LED is already round shaped to begin with, then the reflector has an easier time creating a round hotspot downrange. 
Now that we've discussed the LED, we are firmly within the body of the flashlight. One notable feature on the body, just below the level of the LED, are heat sinks. Now, on the Seeker 4 Pro, these ridges of extra material allow for better heat dissipation to the atmosphere. Another notable example, this Warrior X4 has very pronounced uh, heat sink ridges, and the Marauder Mini has these awesome turbine fan and inspired heat sinks. Now the body is generally made out of aluminum. If it's not made out of aluminum, it might be made out of one of Olight's trend-setting exotic materials, such as titanium, copper, brass, bronze, magnesium, zirconium. Did I miss any? These are all uh, lights that we've offered in the past. Uh, generally though, they're all made out of aluminum. Now the body can be anodized and it generally, if you see a color like this, it has an anodized finish, which is generally very durable. We have other surface finishes as well, like our white flashlights, very popular, have a polymer powder coat finish, which is really good for stain resistance, easy cleanup. We also offer Cerakote finish, which is very scratch resistant indeed. Staying on the flashlight body, let's talk a little bit about the grip surface, also known as the knurling. Now, this generation of Olight knurling is absolutely beautiful to behold. They've been working on it, perfecting it over the last decade. I love where they're at right now. Another alternative to knurling is the rubber grips that you find on the Seeker 4 Pro and the Marauder Mini. Just a kind of great alternative to more standard knurling. Now the pocket clip is an accessory that comes with most flashlights on the Seeker series. It's an optional extra. I love this Seeker 4 pocket clip. It's very effective. You can carry it down inside of your pocket, but much like a lot of other Olight pocket clips, it has this secondary loop. That reverse pocket clip construction does add some very interesting capabilities. For example, the Seeker 4 Pro, you can carry this on the outside of your pocket facing down, so it can actually be used hands-free. On the Baton series, you can use that backwards facing clip to do the same thing. And you can accomplish a similar trick using the uh, Arkfeld's reverse pocket clip. You can stick it on your hat to use it as a headlamp if you have to. The next most crucial part of the flashlight is the buttons the switches, the dials, and the indicators. Now the Seeker 4 Pro has a really beautiful combination of this rotary dial, which is also a button, which is also the voltage and brightness indicator. So on this side is the brightness, and as you scroll up and down, there's these little green bars that go up for full brightness and down for low brightness. Now similar green bars on the other side show you your battery life. You can see this one's got three out of a possible four bars. Now lights like the Baton Turbo have similar multi-indicators. The Baton 4 has a compact variation on that theme. So whether it's a basic voltage indicator in the middle of a button or a battery bar indicator like on the Arkfeld Ultra or Olight's signature multi-indicator, you're always well informed as to how much battery your flashlight has left. Let's take a moment to talk about Olight's rotary selector. Now this is a very intuitive and very satisfying way to select between three different light sources. It's something that I call the high beam switch, but we uh, more generally refer to as the toggle switch. On the prowess, it allows you to choose between your floodlight and your lantern light, and on the Marauder Mini, the high beam switch is uh, exactly as it sounds, allows you to switch between your spotlight and your floodlight. And now we've made it all the way to the tail cap of the flashlight. Now lights like the Warrior series have this iconic Olight two-stage tail cap switch. Other flashlights like the Baton series and the Seeker series, there's no tail cap, so nothing happens when you press on the tail. But whether you have a tail cap switch or no tail cap switch, generally Olights have a recharging capability built right into the tail cap. Our iconic MCC charger, magnetic charging cable, very easily snaps and begins charging instantaneously. In addition to charging the flashlight, the magnet allows you to mount it to metallic surfaces like the side of your fridge, the side of your car. It's great to 
mount the flashlight somewhere to use it hands-free or to store it somewhere where you might need it later. Now the tail cap is also where most Olights allow you to access the battery. And lastly, to bring things all the way from the front to the back, let's look at the lanyard hole. Now not all Olights have a lanyard hole, but the idea is some of them will offer you a place to install a lanyard so that you can keep a good hold of your flashlight, uh, make sure that you don't drop it. So there you have it, anatomy of a flashlight. So did I miss any important parts? Are there any questions that you have for us? Please leave it in the comments. So leave a like on the video if you've watched this far or if you learned something. Please subscribe to the Olight World YouTube channel. I'd also like you to leave a comment guessing exactly how hot it is here at Olight HQ in mid-July. <laughs> And don't forget to join us next time as we take a deep dive into Olight's user interface.